Shalom. Before I begin this video, first and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, Rahavah Kakwadash. And double honors to the apostles and elders of Game Millstone that continually rule very well to this very day. That's continually feeding the flock through the spirit and power of Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And uh, Shalom to the whole elect that is also doing the same things in this work. This uh, give a diligence. To make your calling election sure. To uh, give a hundred and ten percent in this truth, you know you you are uh, you sincere Akim, who's of the whole for elect. That's uh, continually pushing this word, uh, holding fast to the faith. In the name of faith, truth, sincerity. In the name of Yahweh Bashem Yahshai, Shalom. Now um, the title title of this video is going to be entitled perilous times shall come or the perilous times are on his way all right and um you know the spirit is uh heavy on this camp of a uh, great millstone us the hebrew israelites the true nation of israel which uh, the nation of israel consists of the so-called negroes Hispanics, and native americans um It's about to be war declared on um, the Hebrew Israelites. So the perilous times that are to come is known as uh, the time of Jacob's trouble, according to the scriptures in Jeremiah, the 30th chapter, the seventh verse, in which uh, I'll slack you. I'm in trans right now but uh yeah perilous times are coming to where uh esau which uh that's the true biblical nationality of the so-called white man his kingdom is almost at an end and what he's going to try to do is uh it's come down on the hebrew israelites us to call ourselves hebrew israelites And uh, try to upset the prophecies, you know, try to take us in his uh, coming martial law that he has uh, laid up in store. In which, you know, right now, these Edomites can't do anything because when we go out on the highways and byways, you know, we when we speak, you know, you don't see us out there with uh, with guns. You know, standing in a formation with combat boots. No, when you see us go out in the highways and byways, we have Bibles in our hands. We have garments on. You know, we have all our materials to uh, commit these demons. You know, these people, these these uh, citizens of Babylon, which Babylon is uh, America in the scriptures. That's all we have, man. But yet, to the so-called white man, we're a threat. All right? The reason why they see us as a threat is because we're a threat to their New World Order agenda. Because their New World Order is to have complete control over the whole entire planet Earth. That's why the vibration that's uh, here in America is, is the vibration of complacency. And really, that's going to uh, take over, or that's going to overtake these people that are here, that's living on the soils of America, which is that spirit of complacency, the spirit of acceptance, which is in the form of what? Love. All right? The modern day term for love now, now in this society is to be complacent and accept everything. So guess what? In that time to come, that's what's going to overtake these people. The same things... Same thing that uh, the rallying crowd that these people uh, cry about or they promote is going to overtake them and it's going to destroy them. All right. But see, what we teach is completely contrary to what the what the people uh, pr uh, promote or publish. And Esau doesn't like that. He doesn't like that we're coming out with the truth, because really this. 
what we speaking is is according to truth. All right, which really uh, disrupts all the lies that the so-called white man has has published and pushed out throughout a history, saying that uh, you know we're black. You know, we're African Americans that we're Latinos and Mexicans and Dominicans saying that we were savages and you know he took us out of uh, Africa and civilized us well the thing is that Esau has, has pushed out these lies for so long that that now that this truth is, is coming abroad now he's being called out and Esau doesn't like that man all right, because first and foremost, the so-called white man's not wasn't even civilized in the first place. If you go back in the history of where the so-called white man came from, really he came out of the Caucasus Mountains. That's why he's known as the Caucasian, the Caucasian man, in which the word Caucasian means cave dweller. Why? Because he came out of the cliffs of the rock. That's his uh, his original habitation of being cavemen. Now back then, when they were cavemen, cave cave people they had no uh civilization they had no language they had they didn't have no dietary uh regimen they didn't have no way of of life whatsoever and they just lived the way they they thought was right man they, they just lived however they wanted to live all right because first and foremost they didn't have no knowledge whatsoever you know they had no language and so really if you want to talk about somebody that, that's not civilized the so-called white man eat them or Esau is not civilized, man. All right? Because he doesn't know how to live. See, th these are the things, the things that we speak about, especially the, what I'm talking about right now. These things are, are a threat and a, and a huge blow to uh, the so-called white man's uh, rulership. And guess what? In the time of martial law, he's going to target us, man. And we're on the list. We're on the list of all, all these uh, different projects and plans that the so-called white man has cooked up like Project uh, Megiddo, the King Alpha Plan, Rex 84. All these, all these are meant for us, man. To uh, to get at us, but what they don't know is that the Lord Yahweh Bashem has lifted up, has has is about to lift up a standard for his people, his people Israel, which mainly consists of the elect. All right, because the Lord is only dealing with the elect at this point in time right now. All right, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the scriptures. This book of uh, Second Timothy, the uh, third chapter, in the first verse, it says, "This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come," and that's right. Perilous times are gonna come, man. They're and they're steadily on their way. All right, because if you keep reading in this same verse, in this same scripture, right. Because we're in the last days It's made manifest That perilous times are going to come And I'm going to keep reading Right in verse 2 It says For men shall be lovers of their own selves And we see that day by day man Alright That's that pride That's being pushed out On the soils of America To uh Basically the, the love of oneself And really that's that's a demon Alright I'm not going to go into specifics of it But just, just know that that demon Goes back to um Greek Greek customs or should I say Greek mythology should I say all right you know those are different you know so-called gods those false gods that they worship back then so it said for men shall be lovers of their own selves covetous boasters proud now see there it is that's that's on the list blasphemous blasphemous or what blasphem blaspheme or are they blaspheming the Holy Spirit and they blaspheme Yahweh Bashem Shai, even the name of our Lord Yahweh Bashem Shai. And we see that today. All right? If you even mention the name of uh, uh, Serapis Christus, which we already know what these people call him in modern day Christianity, that's blaspheming the name of our Lord Yahweh Bashem Shai, the, uh, the power of the Bible, man. The same, the same uh, uh, God that they read about every day on Sunday, they blaspheme that holy name. All right. Now I said disobedient to parents. We see that too. All right. Among uh, throughout 
uh, throughout the, uh, the course of history or throughout the, the times that the camps were set up, you've seen that, man. You've seen guys that, that uh, came into this thing and they were disobedient, all right, in which the, the apostle elders are the parents, man. Those are the ones that are set up over us, all right, because uh, if somebody read the scripture for face value and, and they probably think that they're talking about disobeying uh, your, your, your father and your mother, well, this is this this is at the point in time where you have to use discernment, all right. Because I brought this example before is that if your if your family was in the in the business of drug dealing, all right, would you would you go along with it, knowing that it was wrong, knowing that you can possibly get uh, caught up in the system, you know. But hey, you know, in, in their mind they think that oh, I'm, I can't disobey my parents. I might as well do it. And go into you know do what they do you know do what they tell me to do even though I know it's wrong once again you got to use the sermon man all right now it says uh unthankful unholy all right which the opposite of being holy is unclean all right without natural affection truth breakers and we already know what it, without a natural natural affection is you got Homosexuals that's running rampant on the soils of America and other parts of the world. All right, Tran uh, uh, trannies walking up and down the street, carefree. All right, false accusers. We see that. <laughs> we see that among uh, us, man. You know, it says uh, false accusers, man. We have been accused. Of things that uh, they say that we do, but it's false accusations, so uh, to basically to defame us, all right? It says uh, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, all right? And the things that are good, it's according to the scriptures, according to the Bible. Now if they go against that, and they're going against the scriptures. And they know that, man. Whenever you bring out the scriptures and bring out the Bible, they can't they can't do nothing against it. All right? They can't do nothing they can't do nothing but adhere to uh what's written. All right? And if they can't do that, then they resort to being carnal. That's the last resort. That says traitors, heedy, high-minded Right, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of the Most High, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof for such turn away. All right, we see that amongst the churches today, man, having a form of godliness, which they 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 claim that gain is godliness, man. All right, but denying the power thereof, they don't know that being rich in this world, you put you putting yourself in a dangerous situation because the Lord is looking at it like. You received your consolation. And the Lord says, Woe to them that are rich, for they have received that consolation. They forgot about that scripture. All right. Now it says, uh, For for of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts. All right. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. All right. Pretty much it on that. Now I want to jump to Revelation, the 12th chapter, in the uh, 12th verse. It says, Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, and the devil that the Bible speaks of is talking about the so called white man. Because that word devil means deceiver. All right. The Greek word for devil is Diablo. Okay. So it says, uh, For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth. That he has but a short time. All right. See, because I mentioned earlier in in, uh, in the video that this truth is a major blow and is detrimental, or should I say, um, it's uh, it's a threat to their new world order. So they have limited time right now. They running on. They really they running on borrowed time. So. They know that they have but a short time to get, you know, get uh, their neural order started, man. It's basically to to grasp 
their agenda that they've been trying to, to, to get to. But they witnessed that the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, or should I say the, the chosen out of the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans are coming together. Because see, that, uh, that's another thing that the so-called doesn't, the so-called white man doesn't want. He doesn't want our people to come together. All right, he, he wants division. You know, he always sought to separate our people from each other. So now that he's seeing that the elect are coming together in one accord and one mind, speaking the same thing, that's a threat to him, man. All right. Now I'm gonna jump from there. I'm gonna get uh, the book of Job. Not Job, uh, Slaki, uh, the book of Jeremiah, the 30th chapter. I spoke about this early in the beginning of the video. I want to bring it out for edification's sake. It's uh, Jeremiah, the 30th chapter, the seventh verse says, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. And the he that is talking about is talking about the elect. All right? The reason why it's known as Jacob's trouble is because Israel is the main target. Like I mentioned before, all these projects and plans that the so-called white man Esau has laid up in store is targeting our people. Okay? Reason being because we're the chosen. All right? But the so-called white man knows that the majority of our people are, 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 are lost and they're never going to get it. Really, the so-called white man is, is gunning for the chosen of the chosen it was, that's talking about the elect alright now uh, I'm going to grab another precept maybe the last one you know how the, you know how the spirit works now uh, it's the book of 2nd uh, Ezra the uh, 16th chapter In the uh, seven, uh, 70th verse It says uh, For there shall be In every place And in the next cities A great insurrection upon those That fear the Lord And that's talking about The ones that are hopefully elect Those are the ones that, that fear the Lord man. Alright But guess what The so called white man has lumped the whole nation of Israel In the same boat Because they know and really, they're trying to cut off all all uh, lanes and highways, you know, so to speak, for lack of a better term, for the elect to come into this truth. All right, because they they know that there's still more of the members of the elect that's got to be that's got to uh, be awoken and come back into the fold, and they know that. So they're going to try to uh, cut it short. And to keep the elect members from coming into this thing, but they they don't understand that the elect has already been sealed, and they're gonna find their way in this truth, one way or another. All right, they're gonna find their way back to their shepherd. The scripture speak about uh, uh, uh with his shepherd or with his or his sheep, he's lost none, but the son of perdition. All right. Nothing can pluck the elect from out of the Lord's hand. All right. Now, verse seventy-one says, uh, "They shall be like madmen, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord." All right. So the so-called white man is going to be a madman in that day. You really going to see Esau show his horns to the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. You're going to see. The true devil that he really is, man. All right, because still to this very day, our people look at him as their friend, as a basically someone to someone to chill and hang out with. But guess what, man? That day is all. All of that's going to be thrown out the window, man. Why is that? Because uh, I'm, I'm going to get this next scripture. Hold on. Uh, see what I said? I said uh, it might be my last scripture, but. You know, spirit jumped to another, uh, shifting to another gear. That's like, 
like I said, I'm in transit, make it kind of hard to type. Second Ezra is the uh, 15th chapter. It uh, started the 14th verse. It says, Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. Which woe means uh, destruction. All right, a bad time, evil times, perilous times, like we, I, I just read earlier in the uh, very first precept that I brought out. Verse 15 says, For the sword and their destruction draw of nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hands. All right, what's that talking about? That's talking about the race race wars, man. All right, but guess what? It's gonna it's gonna be a major event that's gonna tip the scales, man. It's gonna be a major event that sets sets off a sequence of other events. All right, like I mentioned before, uh, the so-called white man sees that you know we're not militant, us uh, great millstone, should I say? You know, because you got other Israelite camps, like a ISUBK, that's in in the people's eyes they're militant because they have the cadence, they have the combat boots and fatigues. Meanwhile, you have great millstones just they with garments and bibles in their hands, man. All right, and the so-called white man sees that. So, right now they're trying to build a case to uh, have us put away in prison. All right, because um, if, if they uh, have uh, some sort of major event, which uh, we believe is going to be a next uh, false flag attack, then that's going to be an excuse to lock down the cities and to put all of their plans into action. All right. So once again, it says, verse 15 says, For the sword and their destruction draw of night, and one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hands. For there shall be sedition among men. And sedition means, uh, I believe sedition means a, a, a revolt. If I'm not mistaken, I got to go back and look up the, the word sedition. But the scripture says, says, For there shall be a sedition among men in invading one another. They, sh they shall not regard their kings nor princes and they're not going to regard their governments and the uh, police force the authorities they're not going to uh, pay any attention to that man they're going to get what they can get man because it's going to be civil unrest it's going to be a complete collapse of society man the likes of which the people have never seen man alright now it says in the course of their action shall stand in their power so wherever they set out setting their mind to do they're going to do it without regards to their government all right verse 17 it says a man shall desire to go into the city and shall not be able for because because of their pride the cities shall be the trouble the houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid all right so like the scripture says it says a man shall desire to go into the city and shall not be able because why because the cities are going to be locked down all right. So it says, for, for because their pride, the city shall be troubled. And wait, it says because of their pride. All right, these are I mean, these people that you see walking around are proud as hell, man. All right, and it only takes a major event to humble these people. That's why you see ma when major events happen, like uh, major storms, especially hur uh, Hurricane Florence, that just made landfall. That humbles the people down, man. Whenever they see a major event happen, that uh, that's detriment, that's basically uh, put them in a state of um, suffering. That humbles the hell out of them, man. All right. So guess what? When the time comes, when the time comes, when when Esau to drop the hammer, that's that's gonna humble the people, man. All right. That same pride that they have is gonna be thrown into the grave, man. Right, so once again, seven, because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. And, and guess what? They're going to know in that day 
the Yahweh by Shemel Shai is the one that, that has done this. He's the one that has unleashed his sword on the people to exact judgment. All right. Verse 19 says, A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. And guess what? It's going to be a famine in that day as well. All right. All your foods uh, and your um, your 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 resources, and actually, yeah, all your resources are going to be uh, taken under control under the government, and all of uh, you know those, those restaurants that you see, they're going to be closed down. All right, and you're going to have to eat your bread by weight and by care. You eat your food by weight and by care. The scriptures speak about that. When that famine comes, you're going to have to eat your um, eat your food, you know your your rations by weight. All right, and with care, not to waste it. All right, you see these uh, obese Americans today. They eat what you know. They eat for pleasure. They eat, eat, you know. They, they just eat every every single day, and they, they don't have no regards to to um, their health whatsoever. Guess what? The Lord is going to take away that access and that privilege, and you people are going to know how it feels to not eat for 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 four five days, man. All right, that's a that's a uh, a heavy famine. Hell, even though, even going through the first day, they're not going to be able to. Uh, keep it together because people love to eat especially our people our people love to eat man all right and um yeah it's pretty much in this precept and i'm gonna close it out here as well uh don't want to drag this on too long but like i said man you know perilous times are coming and it's steadily on its way and it's only a matter of time before that major event, like I mentioned earlier, before that major event uh, takes place and Esau starts to uh, execute for a full-blown martial law on the soils of America. So with that, I let pretty much wraps up this video and this lesson in our uh, Lord's will. You members of the Hopefully Elect were edified by this video. And until next time, once again, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh. Bashim Yahweh Shai, Rahab Kakwadash. And double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that continually rule very well. Shalom, peace and safety, salutations to the Hopeful Elect that is also doing the same things in his work, uh, spreading his ministry and his gospel to the other members of the Hopeful Elect.